Another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that are watching in, to the saints that couldn't make it. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's, uh... Go ahead and pick up where we left off last week. We were talking about uh, commandments. You know what I'm saying? So we're about to pick back up a little bit of narrative. This is uh, Numbers chapter 32. Chapter 30? 32, yeah. Numbers chapter 32. You know what I'm saying? We've been doing all this late night preaching. Man, something got to change. Yes, I got to stop procrastinating. Come on in here and let's do it. You say, 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 say something. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> Who in the audience? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. Hey, can't turn around without her, you know what I'm saying? Throw a little subtle jab. We got a whole lot of commentary down there. I'm just drinking my tea, though. That was the kid, too. They drink tea. Right. What was our equivalent for that phrase? We didn't have one, now, did we? Nah, yeah, I'll say we're cooler now. This is uh, this is uh, Numbers chapter thirty-two, verse one. Let's see what the book gotta say. Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. Now remember, we had twelve tribes, right? Twelve tribes. The twelve tribes were based off of twelve fathers. So Jacob had 12 sons. All of those sons became fathers. So that those through, through their lineage became our 12 tribes. Two of those tribes are mentioned here, Reuben and Gad. Okay, so children of Reuben and the children of Gad. In other words, the tribes of Reuben and Gad. What happened next? They had a very great multitude of cattle. They had a whole lot of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jazer... Mm -hmm. In the land of Gilead, mm -hmm. that behold, the place was a place for cattle. Mm -hmm. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar the priest and unto the princes of the congregation, saying, Adaroth and Debon and Jazer and Nimrah and Heshbon and Elilah mm -hmm. and Shebam and Nebo and Beon. Even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation is Israel is a land for cattle of Israel. Is a land for cattle. So remember, we just got done knocking off a few folk. Right? We just got done getting rid of the Midianites. We got rid of some of the Moabites. Right? In relation to... Uh, 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 in relation to... Uh, uh, Balaam, sorry. You know what I'm saying? Remember, Balaam, he, he set us up. So in relation to Balaam, we just got rid of some of them folks. So after we get rid of these, these people... That opens up land, right? And so that's the land that they're talking about right now. Gad and Ruma, they look like, man, we got a whole lot of cattle. And they start naming off all these places. Keep going. Watch this. <clears throat> Even the country with the Lord, which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land for cattle. Uh -huh. And thy servants have cattle. Right? He said, man, even that land, that's a land that's real nice for cattle. And it just so happens, we got the cattle, right? Let's hear about it. Let's see what they're trying to offer. That's why, said they, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for a possession, uh -huh. and bring us not over Jordan. 
Uh huh. And Moses said unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben. So Mo Moses said unto Reuben and Gad, they're looking like, listen, we got a whole lot of cattle. This land that we just took over, and it's real nice for cattle. Remember, we trying to get into the land of Canaan. We haven't got to Canaan yet, so we still got further to go. But they looking like, well, I mean, we technically this is our land now. We just we just wiped out these people. Somebody gonna have to occupy this land, and it just so happened this land is real nice for cattle. So Moses say back to him, what Moses say? And Moses said unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brothers go to war, and shall you sit here? Uh-huh. And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord has given them? Uh-huh. Thus did your fathers when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For when they went up to the uh, valley of Eshcol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land which the Lord had given them. Mm -hmm. And the Lord's anger was kindled in the same time, and he sware, saying, Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. Except the son of Jephunneh, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the, Ken, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Right. For they have wholly followed the Lord. So Moses looked at him and he was like, Y'all want to stay over here? We still got a whole lot of war to have. Right? We still got a long way to go. And y'all trying to stay here? He was like, Oh man, y'all messing up. Y'all just like the 12 that we sent over. And 10 of them came back talking about, We ain't going to be able to get it done. He was like, Y'all going to discourage the, the people. Y'all remember what happened when that happened? We lost. Anybody who was 20 or older, a man of war numbered in the beginning of the numbers, any of those, they had to die and go. Right? He said, 40 years, y'all going to wait. We're going to wait for all of them die off, and then we're going to let the next generation go in. Right? So Moses was like, man, y'all are trying to discourage the people. Y'all going to put us in a worse predicament. Right? So he's trying to convince them. Let's see, let's see what Reuben and Gad have to say now. Right? Because I think they had something else in mind. Moses was looking at it. He just, he just kind of assumed the worst. Let's see what else happened. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. See, Moses still telling them what happened. Keep going. And behold, ye are risen up in your father's stead an increase of sinful, an increase of sinful men to, our, to augment yet the fierce anger of the Lord toward Israel. Mm -hmm. For if you turn away from after him, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness, and ye shall destroy all this people. Mm -hmm. And they came near unto him and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our cattle and cities for our little ones. But, our, but we ourselves will go ready armed before the children of Israel until we have brought them unto their place. And our little ones shall dwell in, this fe in the fenced cities because of the inhabitants of the land. Mm -hmm. We will not return unto our houses until the children of Israel has inherited every man his inheritance. All right? So now he said, let's clear this up. He said, listen, we're not saying we're not going to fight. We just saying, after we get done fighting, this is the land that we want. We ain't going to take none of the land of Canaan. That works out, because now it's less territory to divide up. Right? All this land, this land that we got, go to uh, Numbers chapter 21. Let me try to shoot through this. It's Numbers chapter 21, verse 21. 21, 21? Mm-hmm. Numbers chapter 21, verse 21. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through thy land. We will not turn into the fields or into the vineyards. We will not drink of the waters of the well. But we will go along by the king's highway until we have passed thy borders. Uh -huh. And Sihon would not suffer Israel to pass through his border. But right. Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel into the wilderness and came to Jahaz and fought against Israel. We ain't coming there trying to bother nobody. We came, we we going through the land, trying to make our way to the land of Canaan. We go to Sion, we like, listen, you know what I'm saying? Can we pass through? We ain't going to bother nothing. Sion responded. We read this already. Sion responded. He's like, oh, now you got us messed up. And he came out there trying to have war. So we kicked his butt. Wiped out his people. Now that's our land, right? We came in there. We never, we came in there offering peace. We was like, look, just let us go through. We ain't even going to bother none of your stuff. We just trying to walk through. He wanted to fight. We kicked his butt. Now your whole land is ours. Right? That's what the Most High God did for us. So that's how we got it. Let's, let's get more of the story. Go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 2. Remember, Deuteronomy, the way Deuteronomy kicks off is Moses 
kind of recanting everything that we went through in the wilderness. So it kind of like goes through everything that we went through. So this is a little part of that. So this is, this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 1. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn ye northward, and command thou the people, saying, you are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. Meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot breath, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. All right? So most I got let us know. We're going to Mount Seir. Well, we know who live in Mount Seir. That's where Esau lives. Remember, Esau was the brother of our father. All right? So we was looking at it, we was like, okay, we got to go through Mount Seir. But Most High God told us straight up, don't even meddle with them people because I'm not going to give you that land. Right? Don't even meddle with them. It's not happening. I'm not giving you that land. So we knew not to meddle. Keep going. You shall buy meat of them for money that ye may eat. And uh -huh. ye shall also buy water of them for money that you may drink. Mm -hmm. For the Lord God has blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knows thy walking through this great wilderness these 40 years. The Lord thy God has been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. Uh huh. And when you pass by from our brother and the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, through the way of the plain of, from Elath and from Ezion Geber, we turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. Oh, now we're going by Moab. And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle. For I will not give thee of their land for a possession, because I have given Ar unto the children of Lot for a possession. Mm -hmm. The Emims dwelt therein in times past, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims, which also were accounted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites called them Emims. Mm -hmm. The Horim. He said these people was accounted as giants. All right? These people was accounted as giants. Keep going. The Horims also dwelt in Seir before time, but the children of Esau succeeded them when they had destroyed them from before them and dwelt in their stead, as Israel did unto the land of his possession, which the Lord gave unto them. Mm -hmm. Now rise up, said I, and get you over the brook Zeret. And he went over the brook, and we went over the brook Zeret. Mm -hmm. And the space in which we came from Kadesh Barnea until we were come over to the brook Zeret was mm -hmm. thirty and eight years, mm -hmm. until all the generation of the men of war were wasted out from among the hosts. Right, the so Lord this, swore unto them. So this is where all the people had to die, right? So thirty-eight years we stayed, till all the people died. Keep going. For indeed, the hand of the Lord was against them to destroy them among the hosts until they were consumed. Mm -hmm. So it came to pass, when all the men of war were consumed and dead from among the people, that the Lord spake unto me, saying, Thou art to pass over through Ar, the coast of Moab, this day. Mm -hmm. And when thou come nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them, for I will not give thee the land of the children of Ammon any possession. So notice what he said. Esau, don't meddle with him. He said, I'm not giving you that land. When it came to the land of Moab, don't meddle with them. I'm not giving you that land. And then when it came to the land of Ammon, he said, don't meddle with them. I'm not giving you that land. Let's hear something else about Ammon. I have given it to the children of Lot for possession. Given it to Lot, just like Moab. He said, I gave that to Lot. All right, keep going. That also was accounted a land of giants. That, that was also was accounted the land of what? Giants. So these three lands have three things in common so far. One... They was all given to somebody, right? The Moabites given the lot, Ammon given the lot, Seir, right, was uh, given to Esau, right? So all three of these was given to somebody. Then also all three of these was counted as land of giants. You had the Emims, right? You had the, what was it, the, the start with the H? The Horims. Horims, right? And the Anakims. And then you had the ones that's, that's descendant of the Anakim. All of them descendant of the Anakim. Right? 
So you have all these people that were giants in these lands before the people that the Most High God gave it to. Esau, Moab, and Ammon. Right? He gave them this land. They killed the giants and they took over the land. It's interesting. Right? Keep going. As a matter of fact, hold on. Grab real quick who we got there and then grab Genesis chapter 13. Zamzumims. Zamzumims. The Ammonites call them Zamzumims. Right? So these are all giants, but the people who took over the land had a different name for them. Right? Just like if we went to somewhere else and somebody spoke a different language, you know what I'm saying? We might look at a rock and we call it a rock. Somebody else gonna call it, you know what I'm saying, something else. Whatever they call it in their language. I don't know Spanish. You know what I'm saying? We call them uh, pants. They might call them pantalones. You know what I mean? Call them draw. They call them chones. You know what I mean? Call it trad. They call it basudra. Basura. You know what I mean? Genesis what? Good Genesis chapter 13. Give me verse uh come on down. You ain't gotta read it all. Just give me verse uh give me verse uh nine. Is not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from thee. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. This is Abraham talking a lot. They just got done fighting over the land. Cause they both had a whole bunch of cattle. They had trying to fight over one part part of the land. Abraham was like, man, it don't make no sense for us to have this strike. Right? He's like, man, look, you you take this part, I'll take the next part. Just tell me what part you want. Right? He's talking a lot. Watch what Lot say. Then I will go to the right. If thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and behold, all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comes unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan and Lot journeyed east and they separated themselves one from another. Right? So and, that's how Lot ended up getting that land. So when God says, don't, you can't have Moab, you can't have Ammon because I gave that land to Lot. Remember, we talked about it last week, I think, that Lot, when he left Sodom and Gomorrah, he went into a mountain with his daughters. His daughters thought that they weren't going to be able to have children. So they got their father drunk and they had children with their father. The, they produce Ammon and Lot. Right? Ammon and Moab. I mean, Ammon and Moab. My, my, my apologies. Ammon and Moab, they produce. Those two became nations. So those nations are the nations that God promised to Lot. Right? So he said, I gave Lot this land. That's exactly the part of the land they got. Then you also have Esau, who was also given land. Right? So the Most High God saying, we can't touch these people. Remember, these people are our people. These people come from the same people as Abraham, our father. All right? Let's go back. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 2. I think we left off, what, verse 10? Verse 11? 20? Mm. It's Deuteronomy chapter 9, I mean chapter 2, verse uh, 20. That was also accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time, and the Ammonites called them Zamzumims. Mm -hmm. A people great and many, and tall as the Anakims, but the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. Right? So the Lord destroyed the Anakims, the, the, Zan, the Zanzumins, right? The descendants of the Anakims. He destroyed them before the Ammonites, just like he did for the Moabites, just like he did for the, uh, for the people of Esau, the Edomites, right? So, now let's try to understand, you know what I'm saying, because it, it told us uh, Anakims. So, if we remember, go to Numbers 13, just so we can get a reminder on who those people are. It's Numbers chapter 13, give me verse, uh, give me Numbers 13, verse 28.
Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Children of who? Anak. The Anakims. 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 Right? This is where the Anakims are. Alright, so it's the same people. He said we saw the children of Anak, Anak over there. Right? This is what this is what our people came back and told us after they spied out the land. They like, man, the land looked real nice, but let me tell you, we saw the children of Anak there. What was so special about these children? Let's hear about it. The Amalek the the um, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, mm -hmm. the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, mm -hmm. and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and mm -hmm. by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. That's why the most I got looked favorably upon uh, Caleb. Caleb, but he knew. He was like, Man, look, we can do this. The most I got gave it to us. We can do this. Keep going. But the men that were went up with him said, We not, be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. They are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report in the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel. Tell us about these people. And saying, the land though which we have gone to search it is a land that have gone, wait, that has eaten up the inhabitants thereof. Uh-huh. And all the people that we saw it in it are men of great stature. They said, hey, big old guys. They said, men of great stature. They big old guys. He said, every time we go, there's some big old fellas over there. Right? What else? And there we saw the giants, the sons of they Anak. They were what? The giants. They were giants. They were sons of Anak. So when you see sons of Anak, it's talking about giants. Right? They were giants, the sons of who? Anak. What else? What, what did we look like in their sight? Keep going. Which come from the giants. Uh -huh. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. We look like grasshoppers compared to these big old men. So they're looking like we can't win this war. Right? These people descend from giants. Now people look at this, and this is the part of the Bible that, you know, people is tough for people to deal with. Right? Grab Genesis chapter 6. But this is the key to understanding exactly why this all played out the way it did. Notice, it was giants in the land in Mount Seir. So the Most High God sent the Edomites in there, got rid of the giants. They killed them, they took over the giants' land. The Edomites were Hebrews. Right? They came from, they came from, uh, they came from Eber just like we did. They came from Abraham just like we did. Alright? Then you have Ammon and you have Moab. Right? They went over to their lands. Before they got there, there were giants there. Most High God gave that land into their hand. They got rid of the giants. And then the Most High God gave them their land. And now we about to go into a land. And the Most High God wants us to get rid of the people there. So that we can have the land. And we're going to try to see if now this stuff starts to make sense about why the Most High God has given us the land that he gave to us when we went into Canaan. This is Genesis chapter 6 verse 1. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters, the earth and daughters were born unto them. The sons of God saw the, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, mm -hmm. and they took them wives of all which they chose. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh. Mm -hmm. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. There were what? Giants in the earth in those days. There were giants in the earth in those days. And what? And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they bare children of them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And so God. the giants were a result of sons of God coming into and marrying the women of men. All right? The daughters of men. Right? Now, some people will say sons of God in this context is talking about sons of Seth or sons of Adam or anything like that. But we know that that doesn't bear true based off of the record of the book. We know the sons of God is talking about what we kind of refer to as angels or a heavenly, a celestial body. Right? A heavenly body, some supernatural being from the way that we look at it at least. Right? 
So that's what happened. You had angels, essentially, that came down, slept with women, and from there, they created giants, these men of, re men of renown. Then these giants lasted out. They started to be strong people. They started to take over nations. And the Most High God said, I'm going to send some people in there to get rid of all these guys. Right? And so it's just an extermination crew. But we got to prove all that out. Let's go to uh, Job chapter... Chapter... 38? 39? Is that what I want? I don't know. It's somewhere back there. All right. Before we get that, I'll try to think about that because I don't really know. Grab uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. Let's start there, and then we'll work our way back down. It's 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. I remember I first told Tony that. He was looking at me like, uh... Oh, yeah, this, is, this is a tough one, yeah. <laughs> they said, you, you start hitting them with this one. It's like, ah, uh, that kind of sounds like Greek mythology. Yeah, okay. It probably do. I ain't going to say it don't sound like Greek mythology. I'm just trying to tell you what Greek mythology got it from. it out though. They say sons of God. Alright? I, I had a, a couple people, some pastors included, tell me that sons of God is talking about Seth. Alright? He's talking about Seth and his sons. You can't you can't show me nothing in the book where that say where you say anything like that where Seth or his sons are ever in any other place called the sons of God. But this is what I can show you. This is uh second Peter chapter two verse one. But there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you. So now, remember, context, he's talking about false teachers, false prophets, people lying, right? People doing what they ain't supposed to be doing. Keep going. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, uh -huh. even denying the Lord that bought them, uh -huh. and, bring, and bring them up, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Mm -hmm. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, mm -hmm pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Mm -hmm. And through covetousness they sh shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. They gonna make merchandise. You know who he talking about. He talking about the wicked pastor. Right? Start that thing from the beginning. But there were false prophets also among the people. As there will be. Even as there shall be false prophets among, false teachers among you. He said, hey, it used to be false prophets around the people. Let me tell you. In that same way, it's going to be false teachers or false prophets? What does it say next? False teachers. He said, next, it's going to be. So it started off, it was a whole bunch of false prophets, y'all. If you read this book, we can see a whole bunch of false prophets. He said, in that same way, it's going to be false teachers around you. It's going to be a whole bunch of people teaching a whole bunch of lies. All right? Let's hear more about these lies. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. He said, who privily, right? Without people knowing, they're going to seek in damnable heresies, right? That means denominations that is going to send your butt to hell, right? They're going to sneak in little groups, little sections, little sectors, little splits from what the Bible is teaching in a way that's going to send your butt to hell. That's what damnable means. It means you're able to be damned. It means you're able to be condemned. All right? Keep going. Go sneak in some, some damnable heresies. What else? Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Uh-huh. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Right? He said a lot of people going to end up following this stuff. A lot of people going to follow this junk. A lot of people going to become Catholics. A lot of people going to become uh, Seventh-day Adventists. A lot of people going to become Jehovah's Witnesses. A lot of people going to become Mormons. Right? A lot of people going to become Muslims. All these different things. A lot of people going to do it. He said a lot of these people going to follow this stuff. And because of that, the way of truth going to be highly spoken of? Evil spoken of. Evil spoken of. You tell me somebody who looking at the word and be like, mm -mm, I can't mess with the word. That word is fake or it's written by a white man. Because somebody was obeying it. Every example you're going to point, point to is going to be one of these hypocrites that brought in damnable heresies. And people laugh at them. 
and people poke holes in their junk because they're not standing on the truth. Right? They out here standing on lies. They brought in damnable heresies. This book. We ain't make this stuff up. We ain't, we ain't out here. A lot of times people look at us like we just out here just criticizing everybody. This, that, another. What do you think the man talking about? He told us that this stuff was going to happen. What we supposed to do, just stand idly by and just let it happen? No, the man call it out. We supposed to call it out too. Keep going. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Now tell me this not happening. Through covetousness, covetousness is saying, you know, greed, I want that, lust, right? Through covetousness with feigned words, feigned words just mean fake, all right? So with fake words, lying to you, they make merchandise of you. So this same stuff that we reading, a pastor had flipped it the other way. Right? He'd get on there to Oregon playing. Oh, oh, and he's going to tell you. And Moses, uh, he, he sent 12, uh, not 6, uh, uh, not 7, uh, uh, not 8, uh, but 12. Uh, because 12 is God's perfect number. Uh, 12 uh, disciples. Uh, uh, 12 uh, uh, streams uh, coming from the 12 uh, apostles. Uh, oh, right? And so we look at it and we like, okay, those are all fame words. Right? Then he tell us. 12 disciples. <laughs> I mean, not 12 disciples. You know, the 12 uh, 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 representatives, they went over and they they saw the land. But sometimes what you see in your mind become bigger than God. <laughs> I just want you to know, no matter what obstacle you got on the other side of your wall, <laughs> it ain't bigger than God. <laughs> How many of us is Caleb in this room? How many of us is Joshua in this room? I know it's a whole lot of the ten. I just need a few Joshua's. Just raise your hand and praise God if you a Joshua, if you a Caleb. And they do that type of stuff. So now you made, what are we all thinking in church? Whole time we thinking this. Goodness gracious, that job offer, I was scared to take it because it wasn't enough money. But you know what? I should have just trusted God. I, I should have been Caleb in that situation. That's what we thinking. In our mind, we've been taught it's about money, prosperity, how do we do better? And the only reason he wants us to do better is what? Because yeah. right after he gets done talking about that, he's going to say, huh. now, we, uh, we have some good things. I just got a call from the commissioner and a new building opened up. And I know we got some members sitting out there on the chairs. There's not enough room for everybody. Uh, a couple members in the overflow. One thing we want to do is we want to have enough room for everybody. So if everybody could just, you know, give an extra gift today, you know, just lay it down right. Matter of fact, I'm going to start it out. I'm going to start it. You know, I'm just going to start it out. That's how they always, they always throw their little $10. I'm going to start it out. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Bring it on. Y'all just come. Matter of fact, I don't even know. I got, I got a new idea. I got a new idea. You know, you get excited. Try to act like something. I got a new idea. Everybody close their eyes. They got to do something super dramatic. It make you want to just be like, you know, come on. I close right now. They make merchandise of them. And just like I'm about to do, when everything's said and done, they pick their money right back up. Put it right back in their darn wallet. Right? And all the people, they spend all that. And some of these people, they'll tell you, my, my pastor don't take a salary. He probably don't take a salary. He probably don't pay, take a salary. I bet you all that stuff in the church name, though. Everything he got, I bet you it's in the church name. Because he's paying for it right from the church. He probably don't take a salary. Right? These people ain't getting passed. These people, nobody getting passed. Nobody getting a break. Nobody getting a pass. Everybody gonna get it. Everybody gonna get it right down the middle. Right? Through fame words, they lie to us and make the book about us. Whole book is about the man. And they make it about us. Just to make us feel good. Just to motivate us to do something. Through fame words. And then you know what they get done doing? They gonna ask them for some money. Because they make merchandise of us. Selling t-shirts. Selling, selling prayer packages online. And on TV. Making a fool out of us. Keep going. That ain't what I wanted. Keep going. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. And their damnation slumbereth not. He said they but is going to be judged. 
Just like who? Tell us about it, Peter. For if God spared not the angels that If sin. God spared not the angels, remember I told y'all the sons of God is talking about angels, right? He said, if God spared not the angels that did what? That sin. That sin. But cast them down to hell. And he cast them down to hell. And delivered them into the change of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Uh-oh. He cast these boy down to hell and delivered him into the chains of darkness. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Mm -hmm. and That's that how you do it. Right? You look at it and you can, you can put this stuff together from the book. The book just told you angels sinned and they got cast down. If we look at Genesis chapter 6, when they say giants, you know what the word is there? There's a word in Hebrew, it says Nephilim. The word Nephilim means fallen or a, a, a feller. So that's somebody who cast down or chops something down. It's, so like an old word, a feller. Like, like timber. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that's what the actual word, but it comes from a word that means fallen or fall. You know what I'm saying? Or to fall. All right? So we look at that and we say, obviously, the way they translate giants is talking about somebody who failed. They're describing something that failed. They're talking about the fallen angels. They're talking about the angels that were cast down because they sinned. All right? Most High God already told us through Yahushua. Yahushua told us, you will be like the angels. You will not be given into marriage, nor will you marry. Right? So we know the angels weren't supposed to marry. But they went down, they saw the daughters of men, and they married them against God's word, which ended up being a sin. Right? And for that, they was cast down. That's how we know as sons of God. There ain't enough proof for some people. Though. Let's go to, uh, do, uh, not Deuteronomy, go to Daniel chapter 3, verse 20. Real quick, let me try to light this stuff up real quick. It's easy money. It, Daniel chapter uh, 3, verse 20. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mm -hmm. and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. They got cast into the burning, fiery furnace. Okay. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Uh-huh. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, uh -huh. the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That was a... That was a Hot fire there. Keep and, going. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, Look what Nebuchadnezzar said. Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? He said, didn't we cast only three men in there? And How they, many do you see, Nebuchadnezzar? And they answered and they said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. He said, Look, I know we've had three in there, but I see four men that are loose in there. Walking in the midst of the fire. And they walking in the midst of the fire. Let's hear about this fourth one. And they have no hurt. And the fourth of the four in the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. In the form of the fourth is like the Son of who? Of God. Now everybody we talking about, all three of them 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 brothers there, all of them are descendants of Seth. Every one of them is a descendant of Seth. But he said only the fourth looked like the son of God. Supernatural. Celestial being. Job chapter 38. Give me verse 1. This is Job chapter 38 verse 1. Is that what you got down there? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I said 38, 39. It might be. Oh, I just know 38. Well, no, I mean, it's like easy to 38 or 39. Oh. Let's see. It's 
Job chapter 38, verse 1. Then the, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Uh-huh. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Right? Who is this speaking this nonsense, in other words? Keep going. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer you me. Boy, fasten your darn seatbelt. Be ready. What's happening? Where was you? Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Uh-huh. Tell it if you have understanding. Mm-hmm. Who has laid the measures thereof, if you know? Uh huh. Or who has stretched the line upon it? Mm hmm. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Mm hmm. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Mm hmm. When the morning stars sang together. When the morning stars sang together. And all the sons of God shouted for joy. And all the who? Sons of God shouted for joy. He said, when the morning stars sang together, and all the who? Sons of God shouted for joy. I'm talking about the angels. He's, he's trying to let you know, where were you when all this stuff began? When I laid the foundations, when I created the world. Guess who was around at that time? Not man. Sons of God, world. You talking about Seth? No, nah, talking about angels. Genesis, uh, no, nah, uh, Job uh, 1. Job 1, 6. Job 1, verse 6. And after that, Job 2, verse 10 or something. 2, verse 1, I think. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. The sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. This is chapter 2, verse 1. There was a man in the land of... Oh, wait, my bad. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. There we go again. Sons of God presenting themselves before the Lord. Clearly talking about angels. And Satan right? came Je also among them. And Satan came among them, right? This is John chapter 3. All right? John chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse uh, 1. You're going to get Luke 2. We're going to have to get Luke. Let's get that first. Uh, get Luke chapter 2. What verse? No, it's not chapter 2. I think it's chapter 9. Chapter 9? Nah, it ain't I can't be 9. Unless we think about something different. No, when he called Adam the son of God at the end. Yeah, no, I ain't chapter 9. Oh, mm. well, it's not 9. What's the last one? Uh, it's the last verse I'm looking for. What number is the last verse in chapter 2? It's chapter 3. No, it's 3, yeah. yeah it's chapter 3. Okay. And uh, verse 38. So this is Luke chapter 3, verse 38. Give me 37. Which was the son of Methuselah. Right, so this is the genealogy of Yahushua. Right? So now we're talking about the son of Methuselah. Which was the son of Enoch. With the son of Enoch. Which was the son of Jared. Mm -hmm. Which was the son of Mahalalel. Uh huh. Which was the son of Canaan. Canaan, you remember Canaan? Which was the son of Enosh. Remember the son of Enoch? Which was the son of Seth. Uh oh, Seth. Remember, the descendants of Seth is the sons of God, right? So yeah. who who is son? Who is Seth's daddy then? Which was the son of Adam. Uh oh, so Seth's daddy is Adam. Who is Adam's daddy? Which was the son of God. Created directly from God. Right? He was created created directly from God. That's why he's the son of God. Angels are created directly from God. That's why they're the son of God. And if you go to John chapter 3, we're going to be remade directly from God. And guess what we had the power to be? Sons of God. This is John 3, chapter 3, verse 3. John chapter 3, verse 3. Yahushua answered and said unto him, 
Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh-huh. And Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can uh -huh. he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? That's ridiculous, right? Keep going. And Yahshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Mm -hmm. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. We have to be born again. Without being born again, how are we going to be a son of God? Okay. You can't. You have to die and then be born again. And once you're born again, you're born of God. That makes you a son of God, just like Adam, just like the angels. That's why Yahushua told you, you will be like the angels, neither marrying or giving into marriage. Because that's how the first angels, that's how, they, that's how they fail. They sinned against the Most High God. When we look at these things, that's what happened. Angel came down, right? Got with the children, of, uh, the daughters of men, Right? And if you read the book of Enoch, it'll tell you they did some other stuff too. Got with animals and all types of stuff. Right? And that'll give you a little context. When we read our laws, we'll, we'll get into it probably next week. When we read a little bit of our laws, it'll give you some context of why some laws are in there. Right? It'll give you some context of why in Greek mythology, you have half men and half animals. You know what I'm saying? What they call them? The, the centaurs or satyrs or something? Minotaurs. Minotaurs or whatever satyrs. they are. Satyrs, that's what I'm thinking of, the satyrs, you know what I'm saying? That's why they call these things that stuff. You think these people just came up with a great idea? All this stuff in the ancient world that you see, that stuff came from something. They saw some real stuff at some time. You got, you got some of these people, you can dig up some of this stuff, and they're talking about aliens and all that. You think these people saw aliens? No, they saw sons of God, right? They saw these, 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 these celestial beings, this stuff that they see today. You think everybody lying when they say that they, they had an alien encounter? No, they didn't encounter no alien. They encountered sons of God. This is, uh, let's, let's go ahead and get up out of here. This is Ephesians chapter 6. These people don't know what they're darn dealing with. They see this stuff in the sky. They're looking at all these planets. Oh, this is Venus and this is Mars. You don't know what you're darn looking at. You let these people tell you that you're looking at planets and all that stuff, and that's the only thing that's out there. You don't know what you darn looking at. You just you just heard that the Most High said God said the the morning stars sung for glory, uh, sung for uh, glory. So if He called them stars and we out there looking at stars and we think stars just burning burning planets, all right, burning suns. That's all we think a star is. All right. Y'all know these Greeks used to worship these stars. I wonder why. I wonder, I wonder where they got that from. The Most High God told us not to worship the stars. I wonder why. Right? This is Ephesians chapter 6. Give me verse 12. Let me get up out of here. For we will wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness... Of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. In what places? High places. Notice he didn't say, look, a lot of people, you think demons, where are you going to think? Hell, below you. Notice he didn't say that. We say spiritual what? Uh, spiritual wickedness in wickedness. high places. Wickedness. So he ain't talking about, he ain't talking about good God now. He's talking about spiritual witness, wickedness in high places. Above us. All right? What do you think is out there? Y'all keep on looking in your darn telescope. Mess around, see something you ain't supposed to see. Anything come down here messing with you. I say if they come, don't be scared of them either. You better leave their butt alone. Keep darn pushing. Till they butt get out your darn way so you can obey God. They'll leave you alone. When these people worshiping and playing with stuff, they ain't got no business. Alright? Even these uh even these devil worshiping people. They be molesting kids and everything. They got the, you know what I'm saying? They like to. They like to put the, you know what I'm saying, put these little, little, uh, I forgot what they call them thing. You know what I'm saying? You see the people play with the Illuminati on TV, though. They always got, like, this big animal, like, beast head or whatever that they put on. You know what I'm saying? That's one of their signs. Where do you think that stuff come from? This stuff got real roots and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You people to be playing around with stuff. This stuff got real roots. Because the angels came down here, and they start messing with stuff. Start messing with animals, messing with women, and messing with all this stuff. 
then you end up getting the world messed up. And that's why the Most High God judges stuff. That's why we look at it, we say, why in the world did God say we have to kill every one of the Canaanites? Like, we have to kill man, woman, children. Everybody had to die. We couldn't even take none of their stuff. Why did we have to kill every one of them? I'll tell you why. These people mixed in with some stuff they ain't had no business mixing in with. And we'll get deeper into it. But we just wanted to lay the groundwork. We'll see the Edomites, the Moabites, and the Ammonites ended up getting the land by the Most High God saying, go kill those giants. That's the only way they got their land. Then the Most High God told us, we can't have their land because that's already something that they have. Turns out we're going to end up getting their land anyway. All right, but we're going to keep reading for that. Any questions?